What's up, everybody? Rick from Rick's Rock School, and as always, my business associate Slug is here. Welcome back to Dog Coffee Guitar. I'm, I'm so excited to show you guys what's on the guitar stand today. Slug is excited because we're going to the river. That's about it. Uh, the Chuck It toy that he got last week. It didn't last a week. Like I said, that's in the trash. We're gonna try something a little stronger today, and then Slug, Slug is gonna he's gonna go slosh around in the water for a little bit. So what we got today for him? Elk antler, elk antler. Let's 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 see let's see how this goes. Go play with that boy. I talk to you in a minute. All right, guys. So excited to show you what's on the guitar stand today. I can't. I've had this guitar for a while. It was getting repaired. I just got it back. Uh, you know what? Enough talking. Nineteen seventy two. Gibson SJ Acoustic. I'm gonna teach you guys a lesson. I'm gonna show you how to use your entire fretboard without using a single bar chord. You know, if you're struggling with bar chords or you have some hand issues, I have them too. I've had surgery. I'll talk about that in another lesson. But if you're having some hand issues, so you know, sometimes the bar chords are just too much on your hand. I'm gonna show you how to use your whole fretboard, how to have a big open sound without them. You don't need them, forget about them. 1972 Gibson, I'm gonna play this, I'm gonna tell some stories, we're gonna drink some coffee, you know how we do it around here, but first I gotta take my dog to the river to go swim around a little bit. I'll be right back. I've been doing this music never ceases to amaze me it never stops being the most fun thing in the entire world and then like how cool is that so so the Dean Markley pickup this is a Dean Markley humbucker pickup I prefer this over buying an acoustic electric I, I prefer to just get a, a an acoustic guitar that you absolutely love doesn't matter what it is I love this old 72 Gibson I'll tell you how I got it and all that good stuff uh, but I, I prefer to take an acoustic that we already like the sound of and just spend about 30 bucks and get one of these Dean Markley humbuckers. Plug that into an electric amp. If you liked that opening segment, if you like the tone there, uh, leave me a comment. I'll show you exactly how I got it. I mean, into an electric amp, into a you know, Fender Hot Rod Deluxe tube amp. A little reverb, a lot of delay, and some EQ, and uh, I'll, run you, I'll run exactly how we, how we got that. All right, guys. Some shout outs first and foremost before we get started. Uh, Wawa Dark Roast Coffee. Uh, if you live, they're not paying me to say this, I just drink a lot of it. If you live in the Philadelphia area, you already know what I'm talking about. Wawa Coffee is how this city runs. And if you don't live near Wawa, you gotta come here. You gotta find out why we eat dinner at a gas station. Come get yourself a cheesesteak and a dark roast coffee for like six bucks. You will never wanna leave. All right. Also, Claudia Rodriguez, shout out to Claudia Rodriguez, great artist, New Orleans, Louisiana. She drew this shirt. Uh, I stumbled upon her booth at an art walk when I was on Frenchman Street in December. I had to have this shirt, Raw Ink, New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm gonna leave the Etsy link in the description of the video. So check that out and support the arts. So like I said, guys, 72, Gibson SJ Deluxe. Check this thing out. I mean, it's got dings and scratches and scuffs. It's got like 50 year old armpit stains. I, I love it. I mean, scratches on the back. There's a crack that's been repaired as you can see there. 
Uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, I have a, an affinity for, for kind of uh, just resurrecting broken things and, and making them my own, I suppose. But this, this Gibson acoustic is uh, an absolute soldier. I love it. It's one of the boomiest guitars that I've ever owned. In fact, the boomiest guitar that I've ever owned. It's just uh, the first time I played it, I went, yes, yeah, I'll take this. Uh, here's how I got it. So I'm from a little place called Summers Point, New Jersey. I was born Shore Memorial Hospital, Summers Point, New Jersey. If you know it, shout it out. My first breath of fresh air was that salt air from the bay and Charlie's Tailgun sauce. So, you know, that, that, that city is very much a part of me. And I moved back to it in my early 20s. And uh, there was a bass player, had a neighbor that was a, a bass player. And he, he would always bring me these like misfit instruments. He was like, 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 like his instruments were the, were like the toys that Sid from Toy Story, the, the guy next door that had, you know, a, a Barbie doll head on a, a spider made out of an erector set going by. Uh, that was the instruments. He would bring me just like, just the neck of a 1970 Fender Jazz Bass, you know, with the, with the, the frets peeled off with a butter knife that kind of thing, or, or a five-string music man that he shaved down, a music man stingray that he shaved down and made into a four-string. He always just had this, this way of finding these strange instruments or making them strange on his own. So when he called me up one day and he says, I got an old Gibson guitar I want to show you, I, I knew, like, I just had this vision of Frankenstein and it, it, did, not, it did not disappoint. Uh, he opened the case and the, the bridge was coming off. You could see, probably still see the glue marks from, from where that was repaired. The bridge was coming off like this. There was a, a poorly repaired crack in the neck. There was a crack here that I had my, my tech Jack Madden repair. Um, and, and I looked at it and went, it's an old Gibson though, I, I, I have to save this thing. It's been severely mistreated. I won't tell you what I paid for it, but I will tell you it cost oh, about the same, about four or five of these mugs from the Ocean City Coffee Company. Uh, you know, if, if I could just, if I could pick a perfect guitar for me and what I like, this, this acoustic guitar is it's just so boomy, I love it. So I'm gonna teach you guys a lesson today. We're gonna learn how to use the whole fretboard chords. Whole fretboard, no bar chords, no barring necessary. I know, look, I've been teaching for 15 years and I know that it is the bane of every guitar student's existence. It's the tipping point. When you learn bar chords, you know, if your teacher's bringing you along and you learn your G chord, your D chord, C chord, that kind of thing, you might have some songs under your belt. We get to bar chords and that is the breaking point. That's the point where you decide whether you wanna play guitar or not, whether you're willing to put it into work. So I am not saying that you don't need to learn. You're gonna need them for, for a lot of songs, you are. But I'm gonna show you how we can get a big sound, how to strum all six strings, how to play chords all the way up and down the neck. Not a single bar chord in the whole lesson. Let's get to it. We're gonna do a little Almond Brothers first, and I'm gonna to get to some Dave Matthews, and I'm gonna pull out my gold top Gibson Les Paul, and I'm gonna show you how to solo over that kind of stuff, how to solo over major keys, solo over major chords, and how to navigate the fretboard with harmonies. So that, that'll be cool too. So we'll get a little, little Les Paul action out of the deal. Let's start with the Allman Brothers. That song in the opening segment, let me get my guitar pick. That song in the opening segment, the chords from Melissa, the Allman Brothers. I'm gonna show you first, we'll show you the song. I'm gonna show you the whole scale, the whole key of E all the way up and down the neck. Let's get to it guys. I'm sure we know our E chord. If you don't, second fret A, second fret D, First fret G, then our two chords, our one chord in any key, we'll do a little, little, little key theory here. The two chord in any key is always minor. Our root is major. If we're in the key of E major, we start with E major. But chord number two is always minor. It's always a whole step up. So you could play this F sharp minor bar chord, but I'm gonna show you how to go without it. Check this out. So our 
two chord, F sharp minor. I'll show you how to play it with three fingers, and then I'll show you how to play it even with two fingers. We can do this at no matter what level you're at. You're gonna be able to play this song, I guarantee it. So, second fret of the G, that's an A note, pinky finger, fourth fret D, and then the ring finger, fourth fret A. So that's gonna be our F sharp minor. Now keep in mind, in the key of E, every single open string fits in the key with the exception of the D string and the G string. We don't have a D note, it should be D sharp, and we should have a G sharp, not a G natural. So we're gonna cover those two strings up. So cover the D string, cover the G string. The rest of the open strings will harmonize with the chord. Okay, because you've got two E strings and a B string here. If you take the ring finger away, the A is in bounds too. That chord sounds great too. That kind of gives it that, that like sus four vibe around an E chord it would do. Here's your E sus four chord with an A note. So here's F sharp minor. sharp minor our three chord in any key is also always minor guys so here's G sharp minor we just keep that same shape G sharp play with three fingers we can play it with two so let's stop there real quick the one chord the two chord and the three chord that's how we play the opening to Melissa by the Allman Brothers we go E and you can actually fret this with your ring finger and your pinky finger I'll show you why because then we're just moving these, these those two fingers in and out. So fret it like this. Go to F sharp. Play about 84 beats per minute. And that strumming pattern is down, down, up, down, up, down. Up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, like this. All, I mean, that's kind of the beauty of the key of E. Use that lowest note we have in standard tuning, so it's going to be about the boomiest thing that you can play. Um, and all six strings, no bar chords. So let's keep going. There's like, oh, there's three chords. Okay, what about, the, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Check this out. E, F sharp, G sharp. Let's play an A major like this. We'll play an A major third, seventh fret D, and the sixth fret the rest of the strings are inbound. There's an E in an A chord. There's obviously an A in an A chord. We have the other E. The B makes this a sus2 chord. It's a great sound. Isn't it? A. B. The E's in a B chord make that a B suspended 4 chord. That's great in all these harmonies. That's a lot better than regular old B major bar chord. Sounds like you're playing a kid's birthday party. We don't want that. We don't want to be campfire guitar players. Don't be the guy that shows up at the campfire with the guitar that doesn't quite know how to play it. Ruins everybody's time. Come on. We're just we're trying to drink some trying to drink some yinglings in peace. All right, so A major, B major, C sharp minor, your sixth chord is always minor. In fact, it's the relative minor. And people say the key of C sharp minor is really the key of E. Check this out, 11th fret of the D, 9th fret of the G, rest of the strings open. Great sound. We can play the seven chord. The seven chord is diminished, but a diminished chord has a root. It has a minor third. It has the diminished fifth, the flat fifth, and the minor seventh. So if we're only playing the third, the first and the third, we can get by with that minor third shape. So that's C sharp, we'll go up a whole step to the seventh chord, D sharp, and then E. So here's that scale. Fretboard unlocked, guys, all six strings. We don't have to mute anything. All six strings, all the way up. Melissa by the Allman Brothers being an example of how we play like this in the key of E with that one chord, two chord, three chord, two chord. Nice, easy strumming song. Great for summertime. So there it is. A little bit later on, like I said, I'm going to break out the Gibson Les Paul. I'm going to show you how to solo over that. Show you how to play harmonies. You'll, you'll be so much happier with your major chord play. I played in a country band for five years. Uh, before that, I, mean, I showed up 
to my audition for the country band. Play with Dave Hangley. He's down in Nashville now. Check him out, Dave Hangley. Uh, H-A-N-G-L-E-Y. Great guy, one of my best friends, singer-songwriter. Uh, we played for five years. We played with Grammy winners and, and some of the biggest names in Nashville. Leanne Rimes, Chase Rice, Craig Campbell, Joe Nichols. We, we opened for, for all these. So country music, even though it's not what I grew up listening to, it, it, it provided me with two things. First, I now know what it's like to have my own dressing room. Or, well, my own, the band's dressing room anyway. Uh, to do sound check, to play in front of 5,000 people. Everything that I dreamed of uh, when I was a kid came true because I decided to go to this audition. So for anybody out there that's a rock player, metal player, like, like I grew up being, don't shut yourself off to new possibilities and new opportunities. When opportunity knocks, when somebody calls you and says, hey, I got a, you know, I'm from a record label, I signed a country artist, we got your name from so-and-so, would you like to come audition? Don't hang up the phone, go. I, um, I learned so much by playing country music. I learned how to hybrid pick, chicken pick. I learned how to play ma in major keys when everything I was playing was like, so I love Black Sabbath. Check out my other videos. You know that I love Black Sabbath. So everything I played was heavy and minor. Um, the country music opened up my world to, to the major scale side of things like you heard in the beginning of the video. So uh, we'll run through that. <clears throat> so I showed up to my audition in a Pantera t-shirt and I think I brought, I, 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 I'm a Gibson guy forever, but I brought a Dean Cadillac, which is like a hybrid between an, a Gibson Explorer and a Les Paul. I had a European Select Dean Cadillac. If you can get your hands on one, great guitars. Anyways, I brought that. I mean, I was so out of place. And I was like the 17th guy that they, uh, <laughs> that they, uh, they auditioned and so I come in and he later told me that when he saw me coming he said this is either going to be the worst thing I've ever heard or the best thing I've ever heard and uh, I don't know I warmed up and he's like yeah let's get started so uh, that started a five-year country music odyssey like I said played with all these cool people did all these cool things don't shut your mind off to new opportunities okay so we've learned the entire key of E in chords let's shift over to the key of D talk about Dave Matthews that's another thing don't shut your if you know if you if you're into metal and stuff listen to Dave Matthews he's one of the most inventive rhythm acoustic guitar players in the world in the music business he finds the strangest ways to play chords so I'm going to show you how we use tenths when we use tenths if you don't know what a tenth is it's the first and the third note of a scale an octave apart so the root and the tenth um, to open the fretboard in the same manner. We're going to use two fingers to open up the entire fretboard. So here is Lion Our Graves, the interlude of Lion Our Graves by Dave Matthews. It goes like this. <laughs> Let's, let's, let's take a look at how we play this. We'll start where this riff starts on the two chord, E minor. And we're gonna play an E on the 12th fret of the E string and then another G on the 12th fret, a G note. So we've got E and G, it's minor third, but an octave apart. And we'll let this open D string ring and I'm using my ring finger to block the B string out. So we're all the way up here on the 12th fret. We can strum all six strings. It's a big part of playing rhythm guitar. Make sure you strum all six strings. And we're gonna just kinda keep this rhythm going. Keep your right hand moving to play with good rhythm. And we're gonna go E minor to a B minor. We can just memorize these shapes. E minor, B minor, 12th fret, E and G, 7th fret, E and G. Minor tenth looks like if we're on the E string and the G string, and then they're gonna go. He's gonna go to a A major ten. Okay, it's A and C sharp. You just gotta raise the tenth a half step to achieve a major ten. So that's an A major ten on the fifth fret. Then F sharp minor to a G. So just with those two fingers and those two shapes, we can rule the fretboard. Look. 
Then he goes up to a D major, the 10th fret and the 11th fret, B and G. D major, C sharp minor, nine and nine, B minor, G major, A major. So, Little Dave Matthews, Little Almond Brothers, we learned two keys, how to take the whole fretboard. I'm gonna go grab my Les Paul. I'm gonna go grab my Les Paul, teach you a quick major scale guitar solo lesson, and then you're gonna have to check it out next time and see what happens. Be right back. piece of major scale solo advice before I go the pinky trick everything you saw there based on this little trick that I use to figure out major scales all over the fretboard you start by finding your root note so if you're in E put your pinky on the E note on the E string 12th fret E and then you just play a normal pentatonic shape from there that easy if you're in A put your pinky on A be F sharp minor pentatonic. It's actually A major pentatonic. What is normally C sharp minor is E. Start and end on the pinky instead of starting and ending on the first finger. And you have the pinky trick. Now go play to some major scale backing tracks. I'm going to be uploading one. And for next week's lesson, I'm going to teach you everything that I just did. Next week's lesson is all about harmony. I'm going to show you how to get those sweet sounding harmonies into your playing that you saw just a moment ago. I'm also running a contest. I'm so excited. A lot of people out there throwing shade at the guys that play Epiphone guitars. I know I'm playing a Gibson right now in this whole episode about how much I love Gibson guitars, but I also love Epiphone guitars. I have one that I play all the time that I've played live in front of thousands of people, and I will stand by that that, that Epiphone guitar is as good as any Gibson in my collection, and I'm going to prove it. And I want you guys to put your money where your mouth is. If you think that you can tell the difference between a Gibson tone and an Epiphone tone next week, I'm going to give you a chance. Prove me wrong. Tell me that you can tell the difference. And I'm giving away free stuff. So as always, guys, you have to have fun with this. This is the most fun in the whole world. Pet dogs, drink coffee, play guitar, have fun with it. Tune in next week to see if Slug got through that elk antler. And I'll see you guys next time on Dog Coffee Guitar. <laughs>